Hey everyone, how's everyone doing today? Glad that we are out of the heat. So uh, again, can I get a sort of a show of hands of who are investors? Investors, okay. And then who are entrepreneurs? I'm assuming it's the rest. Okay, so this is about a 50-50 crowd here. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for all the organizers for this event. Um, you know, Keiko and everybody else that really just put their effort to make this probably the best event of the year. I think it's the best event of the year. I mean, who who complains about coming out to Paris, right? I mean, the the heat is a little bit of a detour, but we'll we'll, we'll get around it. But you know, my name is Paul Vratitak, and I'm a partner at Pantera Capital, and you know, with this presentation, I'm going to walk you through a little bit about Pantera Capital, who we are, what we're striving to do, how we think about our track record and sort of you know, what we've done in the past, but then also how we think about platform. I think it's really important for entrepreneurs to think about who they partner with in terms of their investors and what they can kind of expect to achieve with some of their investors. And then I'll talk a little bit about the bear market and maybe some of the things that do happen and maybe some of the myths that uh, don't really happen uh, during a bear market. And then I'll talk about some of the things that we've instructed our entrepreneurs to think about during a bear market. Um, to us, I mean, the bear market is a great opportunity and not a time to, to sort of just lament and, and, and you know, try to uh, sort of get lost in a bear market. There's a lot of things that you can do. So I guess a little bit about myself and I'll get a little bit into Pantera and our team too is, you know, I've been with Pantera for the last eight years. So I started in April 2014. So I've seen many bear markets, and we can talk about some of the bear markets that I've seen in the past. But you know, I've been around the space for a long time, and there's a lot of things that um, you know, really excite me about cryptocurrency and blockchain. When I joined, I joined because I really wanted to you know, bring decentralization to the masses. I really felt like financial services, emerging markets, payments really needed disruption, and decentralization was the way to do that. So, Really excited about being with Pantera for the last eight years, being in the cryptocurrency space. Uh, I think the most exciting thing about this space is that it's really early on, and we're not sort of competing with each other. We're competing with existing financial systems. And you know, the more that we can collaborate together, and I can see a lot of collaboration here, you know, no unsold tickets. Uh, this is the best place to really build off of learning from each other and really you know, go out there and, and strive to be the best. So a little bit about Pantera, you know, our vision is really to be the premier investor in blockchain technologies and cryptocurrencies. Uh, so what does that mean? That means you know, when we started off, we started off with Bitcoin, now we have uh, Ethereum and many different uh, decentralized applications. Whatever we want to do, we want to continue to push forward and launch products to give investors exposure to all types of strategies and all types of companies and assets within the cryptocurrency space. Uh, so our vision, first and foremost, is, is not really sort of an investment firm. It's really a, a product, a platform that services our clients. Our clients, you, you could think, would be our limited partners and investors, but it's actually really our entrepreneurs. We are building tools and services to really service entrepreneurs and enable them to achieve their dreams. So the first and foremost, we don't really look at trying to sort of make money. And make money is sort of an offshoot of basically servicing our entrepreneurs. Um, I remember people would say, oh man, like your funds are doing so well. And really it's, it's not, I, I think it's, you know, maybe a bit of luck on my side, but it's really just betting on great entrepreneurs and really putting the resources behind them to succeed. So, you know, that's our motto, really service our entrepreneurs. Uh, so a little bit about Pantera at a glance. I mean, we manage about four or five billion dollars. We've invested into over 200 portfolio companies. Interestingly enough, it's actually been 50-50, 50% -50, uh, on straight equity infrastructure type companies and about 50% in token related companies. So we do both equity tokens and you'll see we do a bunch of different spaces within both of those buckets. Uh, we are located across four different offices, about 70 employees, and I guess what's sort of neat about Pantera is that uh, it was started by Dan Moorhead, who used to be CFO, head of global macro trading at Tiger Management, so he's got that global macro background, which 
I think during the last uh, six to nine months has been very, very helpful, especially around the liquid markets and non-crypto markets. But then, you know, he was sort of early in launching the first cryptocurrency fund in 2013, which is our Bitcoin fund. I was buying Bitcoin when Bitcoin was about $40. So the return of that fund is about 60,000, 70,000% returns. And, you know, that's our, our flagship starter fund. But uh, along the way, we launched the first VC fund focused on just blockchain in 2013. Uh, 2015, actually, my colleague Joey Krug launched the first dApp on Ethereum called Augur. You guys may remember Augur, the decentralized prediction market. And then in 2017, we launched the first exclusive early stage token fund. So a fund that invests into early stage projects just doing tokens. So that would mean we were the one of the first investors in Xerox, uh, and that was a decentralized exchange protocol. And then we were also early in some other protocols around the same time. So you can take a look at this slide right here, and you know there's obviously some, some fairly large numbers being sort of the earliest investors in some of these companies and protocols. So this is some of the things that we like to look at. Uh, we like to look at infrastructure, so Alchemy. Uh, we led the Series A, I'll talk a little bit about them, but uh, we took a board seat. I'm on the board of Alchemy, and they are a, a leading developer platform for multiple blockchains. Uh, companies like Bitso and FTX and Amber. So how do we get cryptocurrencies? How do we you know, store them? How do we move across them? Go into different uh, types of products, structured products, et cetera. And then we get into DeFi. You know, One Inch is a, uh, a bunch of European founders who are also investors into Aave and Liquidy. And so we really do, uh, and one of the earliest investors in Bitstamp, so we really do want to support the European uh, you know, European ecosystem. And then we go into other types of financial infrastructure and scalability like near and staked. And then lastly, and we'll probably have more examples of this later on, but we are looking at decentralized marketplaces, Web3. So we're one of the earliest investors in Audius. A lot of other great use cases around music and media that, uh, you know, decentralized social media, uh, lots of great companies going out there and tackling uh, that particular space. And we're really excited about that. So I'll tell you a little bit about uh, Alchemy, just to give you sort of a, a case study on how it is to work with an investor really early on and sort of what happens along the way. So we led the Series A in Alchemy, and at the first, they weren't even really a developer platform. They were a data platform for cryptocurrency. We were working with them and really saw them execute on product and customer service and felt like this was the right team to sort of build infrastructure to support all developers on all different platforms. So we led the Series A and I took a board seat and since then we've helped them out with recruiting, we've helped them out with technology, business development and business model. At the time they had a paid business model, we switched them over to a freemium business model, a Stripe type business model and really helped them focus on the best ways to monetize at this time and going forward and now they've basically are servicing about 60% of the Ethereum applications out there, 90% of the NFT applications. Uh, just moved over to Solana and, you know, over 105 billion on-chain transaction volumes. And we've supported them along the way. We're the only investors that invested every single round since the Series A. Uh, Series B was by Code 2, Series C was uh, by Andreessen, and then Series D was by Lightspeed. So um, they would say that we earned the right to really sort of continue to invest and we want to continue to invest all the way until they either you know go IPO or maybe they decentralize more some uh, some other way we'll, we'll see what happens but uh, this is the type of, of company that you know we want to continue to support and follow along and actually the value add changes over time you know in the beginning it's really roll up your sleeves let's figure out the sales plan let's figure out the business model to now it's really educating them on what's going on in the market so that they can see upcoming competitors and really you know how to sort of shift their product strategy going forward so i want to talk a little bit about this this bear market as you can see uh since 2017 we've had a few different bear markets and i guess i'll i'll talk about the bear markets from from my experience and then also you know the last big bear market that is worth noting so i've been in the space since 2014 I remember in 2015 when the price of Bitcoin dropped to $139 and everyone was questioning why, why are you still doing this, this scam thing uh, on Bitcoin? It's really not going anywhere. And 
Then of course, you know, we had a little bit of traction in 2015, and then 2016, enterprise blockchains just kind of slowed things down a little bit. And, and then in 2017, Ethereum and all of these decentralized applications started to come about. And then, you know, this is the start of where this graph goes. And, you know, we had a bunch of ICOs in 2017, early 2018. And, you know, that was really driven by retail. And retail kind of went away after, you know, a lot of ICOs got washed out. SEC came in, institutions were still kind of waiting on the sidelines. And that's when we launched our Venture Fund 3 in 2018, uh, during the middle of the bear market. Uh, lucky that we got the capital in, and we waited for companies to start building, valuations to reset. And now from that fund, I mean, we've invested into, I think, probably almost 10 unicorns in that fund since 2018. Companies like Alchemy, Near, Audius, Wintermute, which is also a European company, and uh, Starkware, Arbitrum, all came out of that batch. So, you know, the best thing about these bear markets is you don't have your employees making a lot of money on the side and deciding that they want to start their own VC funds. Like, everybody is focused. People that you're hiring are focused on building. And it really does lead to uh, really, really large success. And, uh, you know, I think with this fund that we launched during that time, it, uh, it's going to be probably our best performing fund. So I think right now we'll, we'll get a little bit more into what you can do during this bear market, but you know you can really sort of see from the past that this is really the best time to be investing and really the best time to be building. So we're really excited about this. Uh, a little bit about the team so you know more about Pantera. I mean, Pantera, 19 investing professionals. We have a trading team, uh, you know, legal team, et cetera. So uh, you can see that it's pretty well balanced and actually a lot of the investments that we do are companies that we actually already work with. And so, you know, being customers of those companies really leads us to making investments because, you know, one of the questions that you ask as an investor is, you know, what, how is this product, uh, how is it to be a customer? If you're already a customer, it's very, very easy to sort of leapfrog that part of diligence. Uh, what do we look for? I mean, we're looking for great teams, of course, big visions, and a community. I think what's different is if you're starting a token and a protocol, you know, you go public fairly early and you really have to build a very strong community. And what that usually means is being very, very transparent right from the beginning and over communicating. I think that's really helpful in terms of building a community, especially during a bear market. Uh, you can imagine that our funds in 2018, the price of crypto dropped 90% and we barely had any redemptions. Uh, we basically started doing these monthly investor calls to all these, all these AMAs to basically let people learn about crypto during the bear market so that they can understand what's going on. And once they have context, they will stay. It's almost the same thing as you know, launching a token really early on when things aren't going right. You let people ask you questions, you educate them on what's going on with your company, your protocol, it'll serve your community, community really well. Uh, one of the things that we do really well during this time, and actually I would urge you to do this with your investors, uh, I feel like people don't utilize investors enough for this, is during a bear market, especially as it gets more and more bare, it does become tough to hire. Use your investors to basically provide an outside perspective on what's going on in the market and why they should be excited about your particular use case or you know, this, this you know, cryptocurrency space and what, what sort of lies in the future. You know, for us, I mean, we have an in-house recruiting team. We directly source full-time hires on the C-suite, uh, especially things around product managers and smart contract engineers. And we can tap in many different resources to reach over 15,000 different candidates. So recruiting is definitely important during this time. Portfolio partnerships. So one of the things that helps with us is we've been investing into this space for so long that we've done over 200 companies and they can fall in many different categories, but financial infrastructure, technical development, liquidity support, these are all different types of companies that we can easily help plug into. And I, I urge you guys to look at your investors and if you are servicing companies within the ecosystem or need a lot of support, find investors that have portfolio companies that can be really, really helpful. And around the business operation support, so, you know, we'll definitely take board seats, we'll definitely roll up our sleeves and 
be very, very helpful around creating a sales process or creating a recruiting process, et cetera. But we also have built up a pretty large expert network in crypto, servicing banks and law firms, insurance, marketing, recruiting, et cetera. And then we also do a lot of webinars around best practices, around security auditing, how do you sort of build up a brand, marketing, build up community, et cetera. So I think this is starting to become more and more common for VC firms out there to really negotiate best access to different type of resources. For instance, we can get any company a security out within a few weeks. That's, uh, that's pretty tough for a lot of firms to do, right, you know, without any sort of help. So these are one of the things that we really do focus on. What are the biggest pain points for our portfolio companies and how do we accelerate their path to getting those resources? And then on the visibility and connectivity. Uh, firms do things differently. For us, we have a investor summit that brings about 600 of our investors together to learn from our portfolio companies. One of the things that's unique about Pantera is we actually have over 2,000 investors within our funds. We've been doing it very early on. It's almost like we did a crowd sale, but we didn't. And you know, we think our LPs are actually resources. They are some of the most active investors out there in crypto, whether they are from the retail side or whether they're from the institutional side. So we really do want to bring that asset back out to our portfolio companies. Uh, and then we have our sort of investor letter with 120,000 readers, um, my blog that has about 20,000 readers, and, and other sort of social media platforms. But I think the big thing that we're trying to build up this year too is this space is going to get a lot more institutional, and it's going to get a lot more uh, you know, it's going to draw a lot more interest from enterprises. So we really do want to tap in the Microsofts and the Googles out there and the Facebooks that are trying, and PayPal's actually, that are trying to invest and build things in-house. And then, of course, you know, with Dan's Wall Street background, be able to tap some of the larger institutions that are getting into this space, Goldman Sachs, you know, KKR, all those other guys are really looking to get exposure to this space, some of them starting with DeFi, maybe some of them backing away from DeFi now, but there's a lot of other spaces that they're looking at to try to figure out like how to get exposure. And then the last slide that I'll talk about is some of the tips during a bear market, and I'll provide some extra context around this too. And I'm, I'm also happy to send this deck afterwards to uh, everybody attending here. I'll send it out to the, the organizers and they'll, they'll shoot it out. But really, this is a time to really think about your cash flow situation. I mean, right now, it's, it's safe to have about 24 months of runway. And if you don't have that, there's, there's three obvious things that you can do. You can stay lean and, and reduce burn. You can opportunistically raise capital. Or you can um, find a business model. <laughs> so the, the, the last one's always the best one. And Look, I mean, sometimes you have a few different, uh, everybody has their budget, everybody has their product roadmap. Sometimes you want to switch things around and start with something that can get revenue earlier on and keep you afloat, maybe build up a brand, and then go after things that can maybe increase the market size, yet, you know, uh, was, was sort of something that you wanted to start off with, but maybe you want to actually do that when you have a little bit more capital in the bank. Uh, so focus on monetization and business model earlier, creating exit value. I'll give you a use case around this. So you guys may have heard of a company called Blockfolio, and we sold that to FTX. Um, great return, got, got some FTX uh, equity in stock. But uh, with, with that one, really, you know, they're growing and building a huge user base, which you want to do at the time, similar to, to Facebook. Ads, ads are horrible, just let's build the user base. They were doing that, but you know, once we get onto the bear market, it just made a lot of sense to start figuring out ways to monetize because once you start figuring out ways to monetize either through ads or either through lead gen to trading and other things, it opens up your doors to then acquisition from some of the larger exchanges and wallets and brokerages because they can see some early numbers of success on sort of bringing users over to potential ways of monetization. So. Uh, if it wasn't for the bear market, we probably wouldn't have accelerated our monetization efforts, but because of that led to a very huge acquisition. It gave us optionality, which I think is, is sometimes good as an entrepreneur. Um, I think right now you can sort of reduce excess spending, figure out where you should spend 
capital, maybe not as much around Super Bowl ads or things like that, and really just focus on other ways to generate users. And then think about like your service agreements and your partners and making sure that everything is very tight there. And then I think the last thing is if you are a larger company, this is a great time to be both hiring, regardless of whether you're a large company or a small company, because as you can see, what is it? Gemini just laid off another 10% of their workforce. There's a lot of great talent that's, and people would say, oh, they're laying off like the, their worst employees. No, I mean, you know, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of great talent out there that is out in the market. And so really going out there and hiring what you need and acquiring what you need. Um, sometimes if you're really looking to scale during this time and sort of push yourself out as a market leader, you should be making acquisitions if it makes sense. So I think this is a great opportunity to kind of go out there and really build out your workforce. Uh, Pantera is actually doing the same thing. Uh, when it's really busy during a bull market, it's really hard to sort of figure out what types of hires you need and then be able to go out there and train them. So Pantera just hired six people in the last like two months regarding both uh, investing and platform. So we really see this as an opportunity to uh, build up our staff, train and really push forward both in terms of investing and providing a platform. So outside of that, I mean, that's all that I have for slides. Happy to answer questions or go in any sort of direction. Yeah, you have five minutes for questions too. Yeah. Five minutes. Hello. Um, maybe a usual question for uh, this time. Um, so you were talking about extending runway for crypto founders to at least 24 months. Um, but it's a thin line on how do I make some concessions on the quality of my investors because I want cash or trying to build my product a bit more. For example, we're going live in something like in the summer. We won public last week, so a lot of investors are reaching out. So we're a bit in the dilemma, should we get more money now, or should we try to go live and get a really high quality investor? Um, I don't know if you have any advice in this area. Yeah, that's a, that's a gray area. That's the, uh, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, it's always great to have a, a bit more capital, but of course, if you don't need the capital, then you know, you can wait and try to sort of garner a, uh, a higher valuation. But I, I'd say right now at this point in time, sort of looking at what's going on with the macro markets and seeing that it's probably gonna last for a bit, I would probably urge maybe not to raise a large round right now, but to definitely seriously consider at least raising a bit more, depending upon your, I don't know how much runway you have, but let's just say if you have, 12 months or less, knowing that this could last for another 12 months, uh, I would at least think about maybe raising some sort of bridge uh, if you can sort of see that there's an opportunity to push forward. Um, if you see that there's some data around the launch going well and there's sort of a clear path on you know, growing your, your company, then I would probably try to take in a little bit more capital, both from sort of a safety perspective, but also from a scaling perspective. Thanks. Hello, I'm Chris Duffus from Phone Bank. Uh, would you mind expanding a little bit more on your thesis around marketplaces? Yeah, so I think for us, we've seen a few different marketplaces uh, that have already been tackled, whether it's you know social media or whether it's uh, something like Audius around music, or maybe even things around, um, you know, freelance marketplace and, and whatnot. So, I think I think or Brain Trust even a talent marketplace. So we've made a few investments in the marketplace category. At the end of the day, I mean, with these marketplaces, they all take 30 to 40 percent fees, and uh, these are likely three mar three sided marketplaces where, you know, at the end of the day, I mean. If you can find a way to decentralize these marketplaces, uh, entice folks to be able to contribute directly with each other instead of having to go through a third party, 
Uh, a lot of these times, the third party usually gets paid for things around safety and arbitration, but if you can incentivize a community around you to do some of the work around what these centralized marketplaces are providing in terms of connecting both sides of the market, we believe there's an opportunity to have community-owned marketplaces where you can remove the fees and have, you know, and, and part of it is really, you know, how decentralized you want to be, I mean, you know, but at the end of the day, to really remove those fees and have all of these transactions and all of these services all being done by both sides of the marketplace and the community itself. So, you know, we believe that this is eventually the future. Some marketplaces probably will take a little bit more time to do versus others. Like, for instance, I don't know if we'll see a decentralized Uber anytime soon. There's a lot of things that kind of go into the infrastructure for that. But we are excited about certain, certain verticals. Okay, let, let's do one more question and then we'll... Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for sharing. I appreciate it. Um, so, Vasily from Velvet Capital, we're building DeFi as a management protocol. We just got accepted into Binance Labs and kind of in the middle of fundraising. So, curious to hear your thoughts about having a lead investor versus just much many more smaller investors. Because I think the social convention is always to have like one big lead. Is that something that you still see in the market, or should we like try to decentralize even the VC <laughs> uh, investors as much as possible? Yeah, I really do think that part of that is, is really where you are as a founder and where you are as a company. The benefits of having a lead investor that we've seen is that the lead investor is a bit more incentivized to spend time with the founder. And so if you are a founder that uh, wants a bit more guidance and also potentially wants a bit more downside protection when things don't go wrong, it's the lead investors that step up, and I've, I've had to do this many times, to be able to provide emergency capital for funding and, and everything like that. So I, I think as a first time founder, I would highly suggest having a lead investor because it really does give you the guidance and downside protection. Where you don't need a lead investor is maybe you are able to raise a, a much larger round and you're a bit more experienced and you, know, you can kind of just get to market really quickly and you don't need that much help and it's really just about maybe building a cap table that gives you the best access for the widest amount of business development or the widest amount of brand or that sort of thing. So I think, I think that's the difference between having a lead versus not having a lead. But I do wanna thank you guys so much. Um, you know, again, like, <laughs> we're really excited about being here to support the European ecosystem. So uh, if you wanna contact me, it's just my first name at PanteraCapital.com, uh, or you just follow me on Twitter at Variety Tackett. But thank you so much again. And thank you, everybody Thanks. else, for organizing. Thanks, Paul. Thanks a lot. Um, we're gonna, we were scheduled to have a little coffee break. And